he turned the gangs around and made it political. Therefore, he became the mayor. I say, give the nations the same chance to assume responsibility to govern their own communities. Okay? And they have no longer be gang. Okay? Daily Sun was involved in altercation. You got to know everybody up in Michigan. Good evening. Welcome to Captions. I'm Andre Bohannon, your host. On June 16, 1975, at about 6.30 p.m. on Channel 6, a show was started, which you're watching tonight, called Captions. We have been on the air for a many a month, a many a year, and we're going to share with you some of the classic programs that we have had throughout those years. This was a show to spotlight the minority community, some of the issues they face, many of the problems they face, and some of the solutions. I want you to stay tuned because I think you'll find that many of the discussions, even back then, are really relevant today. And I'll introduce you to Dennis Egemeyer, our technical director, who will tell you about tonight's show. Thanks, Andre. In 1993, Peoria was having major problems just like today, with gang wars, especially between the Viceroys and the Disciples. A former Chicago gang member by the name of Wallace Gator Bradley came down to negotiate peace and at the same time worked with city officials to help the gangs attain skills and to get a living wage job because we all know employment is a key towards helping cut down on violence and crime. With homicides among the black youth still a big issue today in our community, this one might give us insight on how peace did prevail in 1993. Good evening, welcome to Captions. As Dr. King's National Holy Day approaches us, I thought it would be appropriate this evening uh, to invite you to join us in an opportunity to speak with another drum major for peace, a good friend of mine, Wallace Gator Bradley, who is the spokesperson for United in Peace. This is a major undertaking to stop the killing. Uh, in our news media, it has been very apparent that there is a serious problem. Some people refer to it as a gang problem. Some people refer to it as black-on-black -black crime. There's been a lot of references made. Well, I think we ought to go or right to the heart of the matter and, and discuss it with people who can give us some insights that maybe you and I haven't had. So this evening, we're going to take our captain's crew on location, and you're going to have an opportunity to hear directly from Wallace Gator Bradley, spokesperson for United in Peace. Do you know who we are? PCCEO, helping people, changing lives for every stage of life. Hi, if you just joined us, you're watching Captions. Tonight we're going to be discussing gangs or in uh, the term we prefer to use on Captions, nation time. Uh, the footage we're getting ready to bring to you now is a, is a rare piece of news footage that shows what is typically uh, always presented to our people in a kind of negative way. Uh, what a positive influence uh, organized young men can be in the community. So right now we're going to take you to, you to a piece of news footage and then we're going to go from there to an interview with Wallace Gator Bradley. A neighborhood lives in fear. A killer is on the loose and police can't find him. And tonight, help is coming from a very unlikely source. This is a sketch of a man police say is responsible for the murders of four elderly residents on the south side of Chicago. But now police may be getting some help 
in tracking him down from another criminal, the leader of one of Chicago's toughest street gangs. Channel 2's John Davis explains. We're not just trying to rid him from this community, change another community. We're going to rid him from the street. The alleged leader of the Disciple Street Gang has put the word out on the south side that he wants his followers to help police find the Chatham robber. That's the order from Larry Hoover, the imprisoned and reputed leader of Chicago's biggest street gang. The order came through Hoover's longtime friend and former gang enforcer, Wallace Gator Bradley. He asked me to let it be known to everybody on the street that respect him. He has to do everything within our powers to help the community and the authorities to help rid the streets of this guy. Good evening, Gator, and welcome to Captions. Um, as we in Peoria have been witnessing uh, the deaths of over a dozen young uh, African-American males, and we've watched the politicians talk about whether the city is doing enough or not enough, and there's been a number of meetings. I thought it was important uh, that I call upon you uh, to share with the viewers in Peoria on captions this evening a little bit about your own personal background and what's being done here in Chicago that can successfully get at the whole question of bringing the concept of so-called gangs into nationhood or nascent time, but more importantly, united in peace. Yeah, my name is Wallace Gator Bradley, which you know. Um, I was fortunate to meet you in 1988 at Jesse's, uh, you know, during Jesse's campaign. And fortunate again to see you in New Orleans at the African American Summit meeting. As far as the gang situation, you know, I'm a former gang member. I was a gang enforcer for one of the quote unquote uh, largest gangs in the city of Chicago. We call them nations now, okay, for a lack of a better word, okay, we have more meaning because we realized that. The authorities here in Chicago was trying to lump gangs into one big ball, but they only show African Americans like they're the only ones in gangs, which we know we have Italian gangs, which we have Hispanic gangs, you know, white gangs, you call it. What I did here is I went to all the various nations, the El Rukins, the Vice Lords, the uh, Cobras, uh, the Souls, uh, the Black gangster organization, the gangster disciples, the um, black disciples, and said, hey, we're about to fall into a conspiracy to get rid of African-American males by the year 2000. You know, I say we because I have to deal in that context. I don't feel that I'm different than any African-American male that's a target. So what we did, we came together as a united force to stop the killing in Chicago, gang violence in Chicago. We're not dealing with uh, domestic problems. We're not in control of domestic problems. Okay, someone loses their job, they've been working 40 years, and all of a sudden they lose their job. They might want to go home. Before they go home, they might want to kill their boss, get home, kill their wife, kill their children, you know, go to the college, they send their child to school and kill, you know, the, the dean, you know. What is happening here, my brother, is that is working, okay? We went from 30,000 young brothers to over 300,000 young brothers. They all came together uh, spiritually, morally. Now we're trying to work with uh, Project Hope, which is Ed Gardner from uh, Soft Sheen, his son Gary Gardner, uh, Prince Asiel, who's the, um, the amb international ambassador for the kingdom of God, the Hebrew Israelite community. And he also, with the Divine Universal Brotherhood, which is a community groups that's coming around us, the churches, uh, the different fraternities like uh, the Alphas, Deltas, um, the Masons, uh, you know, African American Patrolman League, community at large, we all now one family. Much has been written by Dr. Kanjufu uh, and many others, as a matter of fact, on the whole conspiracy for the destruction of African-American males. There's a lot of statistics that talk about uh, what's going to happen to us by the year 2000. How have you been able to get that message through to young brothers and sisters who are involved in the various nations, and why do you believe that message is going to be heard and then addressed as a family, as a sense of oneness? 
See, it's like this. Um, there was a Cointel Pro during the 60s, okay, that was used, where you had federal agencies writing letters to uh, Blackstone Rangers then, which is what the L. Rubens were, that the Black Panther was going to kill Jeff Ford. Then they'd write a letter to Jeff Ford and say, uh, the leader of the Black Panther is going to kill you, you know, you, you know, try to create excitement, I mean, uh, excite a riot. I'll give you a good example. A young guy just come out to penitentiary, a friend of mine, okay, his name is Willie Lord. He came out to penitentiary uh, December the 29th, okay. He's, uh, I like to call him leaders of gangs, he's an advisor to a brother that's caught up in the game mechanism, trying to bring them into nation time now, okay, nation time so they know who they are. The Tribune writes the story and says, he's going to come out the penitentiary, he's going to start a gang war, he's going to break the peace, and then they say, January 1st, the peace is broke. Now this is Tribune saying January 1st, the peace is broke. The police saying January 1st, the peace is broke. So you see the, the, the conspiracy. We know that there's a plan afoot that says 75% of African American males, not just our inner city males, okay, not just the uh, illiterate males, they're talking about all African American males, okay, we be hypothetical, from the Attorney General to a guy on the street that was still a loaf of bread to feed his family, okay. They worked the plan with 25% of African American males. We weren't aware of it, okay, one out of four. So then they came in to, they come up with a, a bill that was signed by the governor. Governor Edgar called the Sword Bill, where anyone that's affiliated with uh, an organization, to try to help them change their lives around. Say for instance, you are a member in the church, okay? And here's a young brother that says he wants to get out of uh, a gang. Okay, he wants to join your church, okay? You become an affiliate by trying to help this young man or this young lady change their life around, okay? With this new law called SWORD, they can call your employer, unbeknown to you, and say, Mr. Banks is affiliated with the game. And you know the power that they play because they playing them type of games on you now in Peoria. You, 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 you see what I'm saying? Okay. So that was the 75%. Okay. Say, for instance, I kill someone. Okay. I'm be known to you. I say, Mr. Banks, I need a ride to get to 47th Street. Just being hypothetical. You give me a ride to 47th Street. Okay. You say, uh... Uh, Brother Gator, I got to stop first at my cousin's house, okay? I get caught for the murder. You become an accessory to the murder. Your cousin become a conspirator tone to the murder because you stopped at his house. That's 25%. You become 25% with just 50%. He become 25% with just 75%. You, you see what I'm saying? We see how if one individual in a room of 10 shoots someone, they lock up all 10 for murder. When they know that only one individual shot that guy. You, you see what I'm saying? So it's easy. You, you see the conspiracy more and more, okay? By me, have been through the system, okay? I did four years in State Bureau Penitentiary for armed robbery, okay? I was fortunate to get executive clemency from Governor Thompson with the help of Cook County Commissioner Jerry Butler. And I was administrative assistant, okay? He'd reached out and helped me, so I'm reaching back out to the community to help them. 